Okay, I feel really haphazard. It's, uh, it's like one forty in the morning, and I've been up for like an hour. I think I only had five hours of sleep so far in this, I don't know, period of time. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even know anymore about, I mean, there's nothing that matches. Like, it's, it's wacky. Um, and I'm still, I've got another couple swigs of this, I think. And it's definitely, it's chunks. Like, I, so, I might have chunks in my teeth. I don't know. Like, I can't see that good. If everybody's going to be like, so much more kind of um a perspective you know that i have reached with uh not being able to see really good then it started making me think about people who just get hyper focused on other things and other people's faces and how that's kind of strange and uh, so i was like uh because i had done it you know i wouldn't have that perspective if i hadn't done it before and it's just weird. And it also, it brings out this tendency of us pointing things out and making other people hyper aware of something that they wouldn't have been more hyper aware of. And you get what I'm saying? Because I keep seeing this too. And I, I mean, the most basic story to me is like that girl who talked about when she was a little kid and her aunt put on the mascara to her and everybody carried on about how great she looked with mascara. And I think we all have these kinds of things. And then, so she, you know, is a, a grown-ass woman now. And her for her whole life has been, had to always have mascara on her because she uh, depended on it to look good. And um, we've just had people say things to us, you know, point something out to make us all of a sudden hyper aware of something that we didn't realize in our own um, physical form. What is it, honey? What is it? Can I do my work? Why are you suddenly, you got to get upset now? What? Do you want more medicine? Hold on. I don't know what the drama is. Uh, can you hear I'm talking louder? <laughs> I um, have a bunch of stuff that I want to say. I think that's why I couldn't go back to sleep once I was awake because I felt tired. Um, but it got cold. I had to do the fire. Stella's whining because she's uncomfortable. Because the more she'll feel good, the more she'll go out and be super active. But then she goes and it's like, oh my God, I haven't worked those muscles in a while. And I don't know if I already said this too, is um, I'm stopping all her uh, kibble. As I started thinking, I started putting it together and I was like, fuck. These breakouts, and I was reading the ingredients list, and then I was thinking, you know, like this, this is what set the dominoes into motion, was my mom's attitude towards me. It just is, always comes out. Like, she looks at me like, it's weird, because she would say like, oh, Kelly can do anything and be successful. But then is she, when I'm trying to do something, it's just like, knock you down. And to me, on a spiritual level, that has been excellent. Like, I think everybody needs that. And I feel like I have a little bit of that in me. Like, uh, I'll, you know, knock you down because you need to be able to get back up. And it is, um, <clears throat> you know, and it's something that is going on in my house right now. Well, not this very minute because <laughs> I'm getting to speak in a normal tone. It is, um, hold on, let me finish this real quick. And I really want to be clear, too, is, uh, you know, um, I, I mean, I don't want this person to feel like I'm talking about it. I mean, they have that tendency that they feel very, uh, these are, these are, I want to talk because it, this has got extreme stuff that I want to talk about. So we want this person to be, you know, uh, just a case study number kind of uh, thing, not a... Uh, person identity or something because I'm not going to tell all of the, our stuff there's just certain behaviors that I have noticed that she'll do that are so huge that I'm like you know other people have got to be doing other people have got to be going through this and so that's why you know some of this stuff I feel like it's important to talk about if it's happening in one place it's happening in every place like it's so trippy too just hold on As I was seeing all these videos, right, about 
that movie and they were all, um, oh my God, oh my God, you got to see this. Oh my, you know, and they were all in there because everybody's at different levels <clears throat> and they're on their paranoia, I guess. Maybe they're at the level uh, of just, you know, real, realizing um, the politicians are in on it with the big money people that they aren't uh, protecting us, that they're like feeding us to them. So it is, um, uh, so it's kind of uh, like the, everybody's at different levels. So it's not like, I feel like, you know, everybody has to see what I see. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, way past, you know, way past uh, the time of some of these people awakening. And uh, so anyways, um, you know, I don't want to make like anybody stupid or something just because they're at the level that they're at because we got all levels. Cause you know, like you think of when something radiates out or gradiates out, you, you have all of the in-between and that's what we got to get more into the more, all the in-between We're not the, the end and the beginning. <clears throat> And, um, and it's, it's tricky because it's hard to be in the front of the line to be. And I've noticed that I was in the front of the line ever since I was a kid, because I would, I would always be the one who, you know, I'm not going to say jump in the cold water because that's not something, uh, no, but I would always, you know, kind of like Mikey will do it, have Mikey try it. And I, um, but I wasn't doing it because somebody told me. I was just following my own heart. I was just going a path that people didn't understand. And so I got, you know, thought to be weird and called weird. And, <clears throat> you know, there, there was an acceptable shunning of weird people. <laughs> if you said certain things, I think it was like programmed in. If you said certain things, like you were just weird. Cause, and it, it just is trippy, you know, to be so connected to a side of the a side of life that other people don't even know exist. And uh, so you're so connected to that. And, uh, you know, and you look out like for so long, I would look out and I would be just confused. Like, like I would see it so many times. Like you seriously, like you seriously don't think you're so like seriously in anything I would say about stuff. It's like, just like in that movie, the, um, the holdovers when he's talking and people just like, I've just always been talking on a, a level that people didn't want to hear. And that is, you know, one thing too, it was always risky, but see, I knew, I knew that there was other people like me and I knew that y'all would find me. And, um, the thing that's going to be wild is when the thing flips, how we are going to be a more, I mean, everybody has been in the dark and those of us who have been, you know, aware of this other world that, uh, and we understand these things and stuff, then, uh, you know, it's going to flip and it's just wild because it's, this is way more the minority. This is the, and that's a part of the whole thing too, is that the, the impact of the number thing. And cause everybody, everybody has somebody they know that is a weirdo. Everybody does. And is um, it's some sort of outsider. And that's when the, the things flip. It's going to be like the outsiders or the insiders. And all the people that were trying to fit in are all of a sudden going to see this part of them. Like what they were trying to fit into and who they were trying to be. And it's just going to be like overwhelming to them. It's like this picture that comes up and the guy's standing there and this reverberation that's coming off of him and it's really powerful and it's going out into the universe. And, but that is what it's going to be. That's the mirror in front of you. You can't get away from you. It's impossible. And it, people try and because they're so disconnected from themselves, they try and distract themselves. They try and do all sorts of things. 
nobody's been taught. I know that is a big problem with what my granddaughter is going through is that, uh, you know, she was in the crowd that they were like, oh, here, take a device. Oh, we got the new geniuses coming in. It's like, but this is hurting developmentally other things, but people are disconnected from the natural way, the natural being, the natural state, and they don't even understand that there's a development. It's, uh, you know, I mean, man, when you see all the stuff and on the news and everything, like, I mean, everybody was living so toxic, such toxic lifestyles, such, uh, you know, man, there's some bullshit that has been going on in this place. And, and everybody always wants to point fingers at everybody else, but everybody played a part. And the part they played is what's going to be the thing that is just so like, ah, oh, so huge. And, but when you think about that radiation, see, there isn't gaps and stuff. There's, there's people who is, a, it's a waveform. It's a movement. We are just like this expression that comes out of that movement. We are projecting ourselves out so that we can experience this waveform. And, but it's, um, it's trippy because it's, it's like, uh, it's so complex because this is something that is really getting me. And, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't understand everybody's spiritual background. I know, you know, like uh, I'm up at the front of the line and I have been, you know, an outcast. I think a lot of, uh, there'll be like some of the people who will be at the front of the line will be people who are like, drug at it like the people who hit the most rock bottomous and could bring themselves up because that's that's the that's the story it's like and that's what they're trying to interfere with development and disconnect from self and that is why so many like aa and stuff is it becomes like religious it's like you drop to your knees it's like i have something stronger than me like it's uh it's a whole part of it and um so it's that connecting to higher self, connecting to something bigger than you. And uh, so those people have done that. Well, all these other people, you know, have been distracted by, and it's so, it's so gross right now too, with how uh, Christmas and all these people are so poor and they're still out there trying to buy shit. And it's like, when are you going to start rejecting this shit? Like, you got to say, you know, <sighs> I don't know. It's all on this level. It is all this waveform and stuff. It's just hard to be up here. But I know it's part of my, what I'm here to work on is my judgment and stuff and perspective. It's all the things that I've been shown, you know, my boundaries, huge one that I'm supposed to be working on. That comes to me all the time. The test after test after test. And they get more and more difficult. More, oh, fuck, they get hard. And then, so I have had, um, the, uh, let's see. Okay. Is, uh, I want to go back to the movie real quick. Cause I've just, I've got a bunch of stuff. It's like, ah, and it all starts going out. Like it's crazy sometimes uh, how it all just goes together. It's like everything is so divine. And so the, um, the movie thing, uh, uh, at first, you know, it was all these people who were like, you know, panicking. And so I was like, oh, I want to see this movie uh, and see, is there really like, a, a, what do I see? Because the things that we need to be the most worried about is the, the uh, landscaping changing. That's a, a reset. That's the planet reset. And that happens all the time. And there is so much evidence around us, there should be no question. And, it, and it, when we connect to our spirit and understand what this place is and what's going on here, then it shouldn't scare us. And we shouldn't be so connected to something that isn't real. So the um, so we have um, so when oh so I went in to watch the movie. And so I think, um, I think by the next day I was just skipping the videos because there was just so many of them. And so I don't really know what the people were saying. And so then I went in and watched it. I just was seeing video after video. You got to watch this. You got to watch this. And, um, <clears throat> so I, uh, 
went in and um, watched it. And uh, I was, I was so, I was like disappointed. Seriously, it was so slow. It was such a, it was so different than what I thought. But as soon as I started like catching on, like I was paying attention to the signs in the beginning. Because I was noticing, okay, so they're making a point. Julia Roberts is a really rotten human being. And, um, you know, you put her in this really ugly dress. Like they, I mean, her hair looked horrible. Like everything about her was just real cringe. And so, and then it was almost like, like I said, was it a part of the, you know, she was a part of setting a trend. Like, I don't know what she has done. You know, uh, you know, none of us know what some of these people have done to get their contracts and stay alive and whatnot. So, uh, you know, and I think a lot of people, they don't know what the contract really is until they go in. That's why it's like signing your life away for some thing, some goal, but you don't really read the fine print. So a lot of people got, you know, screwed in the system. Uh, you know, music, I think sports too, but definitely um, film and acting. Who knows about stage? I'm sure they got their hands in that too. So, um, anyways, the, um, so I, I was kind of like, you know, is this kind of like, uh, you know, the turnaround, like you, you played this one part that led girls in this one direction and now you're going to look like the opposite. You're like the hag or something. Like one side was the vixen and the other side's the hag. And that's the like karmic balance in one sense. So anyways, um, so I was noticing those things, but it was like going so slow and, and then you're, right away you notice like Ethan Hawke is just like oblivious. And then, you know, and they keep talking about him being in uh, college, a professor, city college. I don't know. I don't know if it was a community college, if it was university. I don't know. But some kind of professor, you know, spends time with kids and stuff. And he was just like, I, you know, all he wanted to do was drink all the time. He was like, he was just a total dud. And so, um, like nothing to him, you know, just like with a firecracker and you put it off and it's just a dud. It was like, there was just nothing to him. No substance. And all, all this, uh, the hag had was her anger and bitterness and judgmental. Uh, she was just so snotty. And, um, but then it just kept going slow and showing him driving. Everything is just the obliviousness. And while all this stuff is going on. And so I, uh, everything I was seeing in the movie, I was like, what are they talking about? This is all happening. All this stuff is happening currently. Like, what are they, like I said, even the one guy's character was Charlie Ward's story. And uh, so it was like, all this, that was years ago when that happened. And, um, and he had said all this stuff was going to be happening. And so, um, and, it, and at first when Charlie Ward started, he wasn't spiritual at all. It was when uh, a lot of people start going and talking to him, but see, it was a lot of those su super spirits and stuff. So I don't know. He got so bombarded with so many people. He, I mean, he made a whole channel. He was doing interviews and stuff like that. So, uh, his thing went in a different direction. So he could have been infiltrated on the spiritual side of things. But when he first started, he wasn't about spirituality at all. And he looked at it, um, you know, just about uh, the other stuff, money and the collapse and stuff. And I don't even know, like, uh, like I knew Age of Aquarius was the Jubilee. I knew that that was the golden age. I knew that there was a flipping of the the wealth, the fortunes, whatever. That it was going to flip the other way. It's a part of the cycles. And so I knew that before I ever heard anything about Nassar Gassar. Like I said, this was all putting together pieces to me. Like all these different pieces. And I was like, oh, 
So this is how it's going to go down. And, um, you know, through the awakening too, of me seeing like, you know, we're not going to be governed. There's no government in the future. So that has to crash. The medical, I mean, that showed its, uh, its corruption. Well, I knew of its corruption years ago. I mean, that's where I got, um, medical negligence or malpractice, uh, conditions. So they, um, I knew about that. And, and I worked around the people. I knew about their ego. I knew, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff. And, um, I, I don't, I don't think that I knew exactly where all of every, everything was headed. Um, I don't even know. I don't remember when I would be looking forward to, if I would even see stuff about medical. If I was like, I was still, uh, when I was seeing all this, I was still going through, um, my own stuff. Um, my physical stuff with the medication and stuff. I was really sick for like a year. And, um, I think it was like a year because they make you wait for all those fucking appointments. You're always having to wait for a specialist, wait for a specialist. And that specialist, oh, well, we can't find anything. Send you another specialist. It's just ridiculous. And you just get sicker and sicker and sicker. And I should have just, you know, everything on my instincts was telling me to stop the medication. And then I'm like, go talk to the doctor. Or it was a nurse practitioner. No, she was a PA, I think. Whatever. And uh, she would always, uh, you know, I don't know, convince. I was, I was uh, a lot more, um, uh, I mean, when it was more in my brain injury in the beginning, I was, uh, I don't know, a lot, a lot less sure of myself. And so, you know, I don't have that problem anymore. Uh, so, uh, anyways, but these lessons teach you. <laughs> you go through that stuff and you learn. And so that's why that stuff has value. And, um, but it's why you're here. Is this is something that just blows my mind. Okay, so I got to say this. You know, but I still got to go back to this other thing um, in the movie that I want to say. Uh, but, okay, I'm going to finish that because that's sticking out now. Okay, so, um, because now on all these videos. So, to me, when I was seeing it, I was like, okay, this stuff is all happening. I mean, they didn't even show stuff about the all the storms and stuff. They kept showing stuff about what was going on. Uh, with the government and the, all this war, all that kind of stuff, which um, it's all got to, it's all got to fall apart. And so that has to, um, that has to happen. And I might have to let him out. So I, I, and sometimes I'll let him out and he's like, I don't want to go out. I just need to jump around a lot. It's like, dude, just wait. And he, I got him all these new chew bones. And that started kind of a little battle going. But um, all of a sudden, still, it's just like, I want the chew bones. He got something new. It's so funny. His dogs are so much like kids. Like, I don't know how people can sit there and think that they're mindless and stuff. It's crazy. It's like, then you don't pay any attention to dogs if you think they're mindless. Um, so, um, just a minute, Jack. Let me finish. Let me just let him out. Hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> Do you want to go outside? No, he just wanted a bone. The one bone he didn't have. Oh, you broke it. So go back in there and she wants some. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and people want to say they're mindless. They're fucking connivers. Especially him. He's so he's so smart. The only thing is is that something just like a hormone or something. He gets excited. But I have seen um because I started looking up on TikTok for videos talking about ways to conquer if you, your dog's a biter. And um so I've seen some and they're always like, You gotta use your crate, you know, so doing this crate thing and giving him times out and stuff is like the best thing to do. 
So that's what we do. But sometimes he's so hard to catch. He goes so fucking crazy. And he what, he just doesn't listen. And then he is so excited. So, but this does calm him down. And so, but anyways, I got him all these coupons. So, okay, let's get back on this. So, so on the movie thing. So, um, then I started noticing all these people. Because I, yesterday I had said about, I said, uh, the t-shirts and stuff. I said that there was signs all through the movie of different things. Like the Obey, like just her having her hair cut like that. It was like the obsession, even generational obsession. This girl, like, I was, uh, I mean, my, my daughter who is 30, she watched Friends during Friends time and was obsessed. Like, and then later got, you know, and continued the obsession. And, um, like, bought the videos and all that stuff. But she watched it while it was going on. You know, the drama with Rachel and, um, what's his name? Oh, I can't remember his name all of a sudden. But, um... Uh, but anyways, um, so it has those little hidden kind of, um, innuendos or something like this girl's got the Rachel haircut. She's obsessed with friends. It's fucking old show. And, and then about probably it also has that, um, you know, like innuendos, like, oh, they, these kids are being raised on garbage and they're having to go back and watch old shows. But the way that, you know, uh, Chandler just died and uh, the way that that kept being in there, there's more, uh, you know, I'm not a total code bro. Like, there's people who can break these codes like crazy. Uh, and so all those kind of codes, like, what number does it stop at? And what what happens in? And what, what star, what's over there? You know, like, they can fucking break this shit down. Like, we'll go watch these movies. And watch the codes behind it. And I'm not that good. <laughs> I can I can pick up on some things. Like the Obey uh, Satan was obvious. Because of all the stuff about NASA. Really is Satan. Or mean Satan or whatever. And that's what, what, what this whole concept of Satan comes from. Is the lies that we're being tricked by this institution. It started, you know, our, one of our biggest lies of all. We're spinning out here. We're landing on the moon. All this crazy stuff. Like, people are so fucking absorbed in that. And, um, the, uh, but that was really obvious. Uh, you know, his t-shirt and her t-shirt kept standing out to me. The hair, her obsession with the show, the mom, the dad's, uh, just oblivion. And this being like a couple that would have been, I think that they're so progressive and, you know, here he is turning his back on somebody who couldn't speak English and not having any empathy. Like, all of these characteristics of, uh, you know, what people get an illusion of what they think they are and are completely unaware of who they are. And that's why this, you know, the universe is going to do them a favor. Oh, you think you're one way, but look at this. <laughs> and, you know, I know that's what's going to happen with my kids, like... Because I have, um, you know, well, I've seen it, seen it over and over and over. Is, um, yeah, when the, when people don't see you for who you are, it's a part of their, there's something to it, a part of their awakening or a part of a karmic, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's for all different reasons for everybody. But I've definitely been shown that over and over. And they don't see me at all like it's it's weird it's definitely weird and when it goes on you know you have to question everything and then, so you question everything like you know what how does this happen and you know should it bother me is it bothering me like you know you just got to go through the process and it is a process it's not something that just happens you know and you're over it no I've cried about it I've been upset about it at different times and then I've gotten to this point of just is uh, you know my boundaries uh, you, you know if i'm not i'm not a, a cake or a pie or something you just can't cut me up and take out the slices you like and leave the rest behind i'm a package deal <laughs> you take the package or you know and you can't sit here and keep telling me you know all oh, these pieces are good but those pieces suck i i don't like those pieces they taste horrible we don't like the way they smell we don't like the way they look you know get those pieces the fuck out of here 
it's like, well, they come with those pieces. So that's, um, you know, <laughs> said, it, said, said and done. Like, I don't know what I tell you. I'm not dividing myself up for nobody. I'm not going to go around trying to please anybody. I am, I am who I am and I like myself and, you know, that took a long time to get there. And so I'm not going to go back now. It's like I'm full speed ahead. And so, you know, and it, if you have a problem with that and that's where I know like the universe is going to show them like what their problem is. It's, you know, and I, that's why I just throw my hands up on so many things. It's just like, well, it's not my lesson. To, and I've always trusted the universe on, you know, deciding what's important and what's not important and how to play this stuff out. You know, it's not for me to decide. If I get too hung up on that, that's me giving energy to something like, why, why am I worried about it? It's not, you know, if they, if we have to go through our whole lives and them never see me, then, you know, that was a part of my uh, perspective, what I was here to witness. Um, but I can't give it, um, you know, I can't put my boundaries down now that I understand boundaries and I love myself. So I can't put boundaries down and let people step on me again. And, uh, so there's all the different, you know, everything's different aspects of things. So, but, um, you know, anyways, in that movie, I was noticing about that and I had said it on here yesterday morning. And so then when I went on TikTok yesterday, I kept seeing people say, go see it, go see it. But in the afternoon, all of a sudden it was like caught on and now everybody's like, obey Satan, obey Satan. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so, so weird. But I've had that kind of thing happen so many times. Like I've talked about it before. Because when you are like, you know, I, I don't know. There's lots of words you could say. Trendsetter, the waveformer, the light bringer. You know, when you're going because uh, you're only holding the light or taking when, the, when things shift to the new direction, see. Because before, you're just a weirdo out there, you know, in the field by yourself, wandering around, bumping into trees. And everybody's over here laughing at you. But when, um, and we're in the shift already, you know, it's a, it's a mental shift. It's a shift of consciousness. We are this waveform out in space and it is, um, it's shifting. It's like shifting directions. And so it's this whole movement it's moving and so um but it's an uncomfortable position to be in when you are the outcast and so um and it's a lot to keep yourself going and uh, you know I mean because uh, literally when I was um born I was uh born I was like you know I came in being uh you know, punched by the universe, like, ah, you know, it was like, it was uh, hard from the start, and uh, it never got better, and I mean, even when it was like, uh, the cherry on top is going to be getting a brain injury after all of these hard uh, things that I've gone through, and then, um, but no, that was, um, that was the opportunity to have the comeback story, that was the opportunity, but I had to pick myself up over and over and over and over throughout life. And, you know, like I said, it started in the beginning. And so it's like, it's building you up to be stronger and stronger because the things get harder and harder and harder. And you got to just keep picking yourself up and picking yourself up and picking yourself up. Even when, I mean, to me, there is never any choice. I, I, <clears throat> But that is the thing, too, is um, it makes me kind of uh, judgmental or harsh. It makes me like, come on, <laughs> you can do this. You're the only person who can. Nobody can do it for you. It's just you. And um, so I have, a, you know, an attitude. And it can come across different to different people. Some people can think it's a go-getter. Some people can think it's harsh. Some people can think, you know, I'm judgmental. Some people can think I'm... Uh, mean it all is in the receiver how they perceive 
my behavior. And, uh, but, you know, it's how I look at things. It's, you know, how I, I can't change that to be, uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't believe I'm supposed to change that. I think we're supposed to be who we are and what we are based on our experiences and what we're here to present. And so, um, you know, I feel like it's getting, you're supposed to be getting closer and closer to yourself. And, um, but, you know, um, let me think, because there was something in between there. I was going to say, because uh, the, uh, I can't remember. I guess it will probably come back to me. So, uh, but, you know, like I said, that um, the girl is, uh, she's at a, a place right now, a crisis stabilization place. And so there was some different things I wanted to talk about with when you're healing, you know, it's really important. And uh, I did a TikTok on this yesterday. Um, I think when I got back, I don't know. Uh, that is, um, it's just so important because this is something that, you know, is over and over and over and over. And, uh, you know, there's definitely been times when I've had to say, I'm done. I'm not listening to this anymore. You, you want to sit there and talk bad about yourself and do, I can't do it. No, I, I'm not going to, I'm not a part of this, you know. You got to take your pain into your room and work through it. And so, you know, like I said, it's like sometimes you're setting boundaries. And when somebody is just losing their minds and just spiraling, it's like I can't be a part of that. I can't, you know. And and then when they get upset, uh, you know, it's like so I'm having to set boundaries in my um experience that De definitely ones you know where you don't want to you know it's like a, a, why would I be asking for this situation this is like why would I even come up with it and then plus to have to be harsh to somebody who's in a crisis makes you feel horrible have to be harsh to somebody who's young and feels so hopeless makes you feel horrible but uh, and, you know I my guides or whatever in the long run I see like I'm also teaching her how to have boundaries like you know was something like I didn't know you know I didn't go out into the world knowing about boundaries and then even you know you'll be people making fun of you like oh you don't have boundaries it's like what are you talking about what are boundaries you know and you have to go read about it <laughs> like boundaries and then it's like so uncomfortable and awkward to try and set boundaries when you know it's completely foreign to you and so yeah and so you, all these different scenarios come to you in your life to like test you like and get you to you know really shine up the you know define yourself and so the um uh you know with her being here that's what i started because you know at first i'm feeling like you know, uh, like you get into, oh, I'm going to save her. I'm going to help her. I've got all these great ideas. But now I see my, uh, what I, what I use to heal and what I notice and stuff is just, it's a different level. Like not everybody understands what the fuck I'm talking about. And, uh, I mean, it's like I'm talking Chinese or something. They just don't understand at all. And, uh, and, and I'm not just talking about her, uh, uh, the people I talk to, and uh, people don't understand what I'm saying. Like, this is all sorts of people. And, um, and I, so, you know, those of you who do, it's like, I can't even tell you how many people I say this stuff to. And they are just like, don't I don't understand what I'm saying and I and I always wonder is this like they're cut off from themselves what am, am I explaining this weird like I don't get it but um but I learned you know with her being here and thinking you know I would help her and then seeing like bug I'm kind of put more pressure on her because I'm like way up here and I've even told her you know it's different levels you know I'm talking way above what your understanding is on this stuff 
And so you probably need to talk to some people who are more understanding what you're talking about and stuff. Oh my gosh, Jackson, will you stop? And um, so, uh, and I'm not trying to say it, it be mean or something, but it just is. We're all different vibrations. And it is a lower vibration when you're in pain and suffering and stuff. And I don't know how to, you know, when I'm talking in this other level, you know, and then I talk, and then it gets more con convoluted when I talk too, because I've always talking about what's happening on the world and all these changes, you know, I'm like, like this. <laughs> and so, um, now I've seen like my, uh, the way I do things or how I look at things isn't helpful for everybody. And so then, you know, it's like, okay, she's here to, to teach me, obviously I'm supposed to be learning things. And so, um, you know, I learn a, a lot of different things. Like I'll see certain things, um, you know, it'll give me a lot of insight, but, uh, definitely the pushing me to have boundaries. And then I've noticed how much more it defines me because she's always questioning me and questioning me and questioning me. And, um, and I don't know how it works in people's minds, but somehow things get twisted. I don't know if they're trying to do a confirming thing for themselves to get back to their original story or just not listening well, or just, you know, overthinking can damage you in the, uh, in a lot of ways because it's, it's, it can be overwhelming. If you're stuck in your head, you've got to get stuff out of your head. You got to talk, go and scream and yell, punch pillows, uh, go jog. You can find some way to release some energy and go out into the field and scream as loud as you can and, uh, and write your emotions down. I even told her, you know, you could do like a ceremony, write down these things and then you can burn them. Like there's all sorts of ceremonies you it would be inside your imprint. Like you don't need to go look up, oh, what it, what would be the right ceremony or whatever. Just go inside of you and feel, think about what feels right. You know, what you're releasing, how you want to release it and stuff. Because all that stuff is inside. If you're motivated to do a certain thing, it's because that stuff is inside of you. It's a part of your imprint. And which then, you know, how many of these so-called witches, like they didn't learn if they came back to be wit, like it doesn't make any sense to me. I'll never understand it. But um, because like I can have an awareness, like I can feel real comfortable as the witchy weird woman in the woods and know like, oh, I've been in this role before, but I'm not here to play that role again. Like I, I'm in tune with that side of myself, but I'm here to play a different role. And um but another thing too is, uh, so I've noticed is, you know, cause you know, being a kid from the system and uh, there's all these kids from the system being dumped out now as all these kids are aging, I, they make it 18 years old, you're out. And so many of these kids, I keep seeing these videos of these little kids, you know, crying. They're like 10, 11, 12 years old getting adopted. And I'm just so happy and so thankful to have a family. It's just so, man, it's so heartbreaking. And that so much of this CPS nonsense was to just cause destruction in the families and stuff. And, um, oh yeah, one thing too is, you know, on the thing with um, the black people, uh, the original people that um, I just saw this guy was showing uh pictures of Billy the Kid and Jesse James and stuff. They were all black guys. They did not put fucking white Jesus in the Bible by accident. Like it was definitely, they did that on purpose. They're changing all of these black heroes and stuff into white images. And it's, uh, they, they're story stealers. And the, um, even that other show on Netflix, I can't think of what it's called, but I used to, when I was watching it, I kept thinking, this is so strange. Why are they being so historically inaccurate like this? And they had all these, uh, you know, all these white and black aristocrats just, you know, and the black kings and queens and stuff. And they were all just, you know, one big happy family. And um, 
now, now I see it was all black kings and queens. And then the people with the money put in these aristocrats who went in and screwed over these people and took them and took their land and then turned them into, uh, you know, people who paupers and stuff that had no money. I had to work for other people. I had to work out on farms just to have a place to have their families be able to have a place to live and stuff. They took everything from them. And um, some of the families... I think got to, you know, move forward um, because I've seen some uh, people talking about it, like when they did their heritage thing. But then I think at some point the fortune gets taken. Uh, they've been taking the money of uh, fortunes away from black families for a long time. But I think back a long time ago when they were the ones who owned America, well, they didn't take ownership of America and call it America. They just had their different areas, but they were farmers and stuff and they made a lot of money and it was their land. That's why these people came in and took it from them. And, <clears throat> and then we've seen this play out like right in Hawaii and the story and how they went over there and they tricked the king or the queen, um, it was the queen. And then um, it's all uh, these tricks that they do. And it all has to do with um, agriculture and resources. And so it's like they get them in traps or something. But the traps aren't even real. The traps are only as real as you make them. But see, they heavy hand people. And they say that they've got all of... And then they get police and stuff to go out and... Uh, to put, you know, to put the heavy hand on us, you know, they, it judges, all of it is, you know, they're like nonsense to control us, but, and then they find, you know, what CPS and the, all these people were doing, and kids stealing and shit, and, um, uh, but, you know, they've been, I don't know, it's just crazy, you know, when you see these people, and they were really black, and then you see the uh, Jesus and their biggest story that they could come up with in history. And they turned that guy white when he was be a Middle Eastern, you know, a, 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 a very black person, dark, dark. Um, I don't know what region, if he'd be like Egyptian or something, but that was like what that Ravi or Rami or whatever, what his show is about is about like when you get over there, it is like it, like a certain black people would not think these people were black people too, even though other people would think these people are black people. Like it's a whole thing. I don't know. He talks a lot about it. It just makes you more aware of just like <clears throat> all these different realities, all these different experiences, all these different experiencers, and what the universe is gathering information from the experiencer. It is that you know it's what keeps this flow a moving, and so um, uh, but I have seen with the kids from the system is how it interrupts them developmentally, like and how it makes them stunted in a lot of ways where they're back to you know aging out of the system at 18, but developmentally they are still at like 10, 11 years old. And they're scared to death. Like they don't, they don't know how to do all this stuff. They were taken out of a home. They don't know how to do these things. And it's like, you know, how, how am I supposed to function? Once it's like taking kids and putting them in prison and then letting them out all of a sudden. Say, hey, this is the world. Bye. Good luck. It's like, but they do that because they want criminals. They want prostitutes. They want people who are hopeless and helpless and on drugs. And. <clears throat> And so many people run to, when they're feeling pain inside of them, they run to drugs. The way to get the pain out is to go and look. You can't get rid of it until you look at it. There's no hiding from it. It's inside of you. And so people have to really start acknowledging and seeing that the stuff is coming inside of you. You have to go through it. But even yesterday when I had said about people getting stuck and just staying in shame and guilt. And you can't get stuck there. you got to move through it. And, um, you know, there's other people. You know, it's a place that people get stuck. It's a hard one to get over. Guilt and shame will eat you up. 
and uh, you've got to learn how to forgive yourself. And that is the value there. That's the valuable lesson. That's the gold nugget is the forgiveness. Because you, when you can forgive yourself, then, and see, this is where, uh, you know, I start talking. And people are just like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just feeling pain. And it's like, yeah, but <laughs> I'm too much for some people. And, um, so, uh, the, you know, with the, the nugget inside is the forgiveness because once you can forgive yourself, it releases so much of that energy, so much of that heaviness, that darkness. And then, um, then you have the capabilities to start forgiving others because then you can relate. You can see like you aren't a horrible person yet you hurt people. So the person who hurt you is also not a horrible person. They also were in pain and suffering. They were also having trauma and, you know, didn't know how to process. And what is, you know, an important part is that they will feel the impact of what they have done. You can't get away from it. That is what people have got to see. Like, you don't have to hold a grudge. The universe will make sure. So many people, oh God, they get vindictive and revenge and... um. And they don't realize that's the shit is hurts you. When you go out with intention to hurt another person, that will reverberate back into pain to you in such a hard way. And it is very hard to uh, process through because you will keep looking at it because you know your truth. You know what you did. You know you did it on purpose. And so you can't hide from it. So you, it's a lot of stuff to release, a lot of pain to let go of a lot of forgiving yourself and being like yeah you know seeing but you're not expected to be perfect you're here playing a part it isn't even who you are it's all like a tiny little uh it's like one cell of you because uh, everything is micro macro the same way we're made up of all these cells we are like the expression of the universe is us in a larger form and everything is like an expression of itself so all of these cells is like all aspects of self and there's nothing that you aren't. And so, you know, this is a, it's like an opportunity to look at a side of yourself, to, to put it all together, to make you a whole so that you're not just focused on this one side, yet you, um, you're putting this other side out into the world that you have no awareness of. And then you're judging these other people off of this other side of yourself because you don't even have the awareness of yourself because you just think it's all the other people. It's like you're, you're skipping your part. You're just look, focusing on what they're doing, but you're skipping what you're doing. And then because if you pay attention to what you're doing, you slow down, you pay attention, you start questioning yourself like, why did I just do that? Why did I just say that? What, what, you know, am I trying to fix something? Am I trying to uh, reject somebody? Like what, what games am I playing? So you just got to slow down and take a harder look at yourself and see so that you can see your part. And then your part is going to be cringe. You're going to be, you know, like, oh, why, why did I do that? Oh, why am I acting like that? And, you know, because it's all we're doing is being, when everybody's in lower chakra, everybody's just reacting off of everybody else. And it is a very, it's like a, a badminton game that got out of hand and it was just slamming the balls back and forth. And that is why the energy just is just like too much. And that's why it's going to pop off and turn the other direction. And that's what, you know, we're going through. And so, um, it was I going to say something about because I knew so many of these things were going to be different because of that age of Aquarius. I knew it was going to be switching. And then plus, uh, when you go out and listen to all these QHHT things back when I was listening to all those around the event the last time they were talking about it. Then um, there was so much talk of, because uh, a lot of the people... Yeah, I would say there's not a lot of people around like uh, it's more like villages people don't live the same as they lived before and a lot of things are different and uh, uh, but a lot of the people they weren't saying like it was all like high tech it was like you know when um 
uh, not Avatar. There's another movie. I can't think of the name of it. It's got, um, it's, I think it's got Kara Delvin, Delving, Delving or something. And a guy, but I can't think of his name. And they're young and they're like these space police people. And there's this war going on in another realm because we're the war people. Well, well we got sucked into it because we're not the original war people. It was like the Draco. It's like there's warring people out there. And they go around and war into other people's realities. They affect other people's realities. And so that's what happens in this one. And they're affecting this other people's reality. And all these people are just living life, just out on an island and just, you know, living. And um, that's what it seemed like to me that I would hear in those QHHT things. As uh, one that I always remember is this guy said that he was with this person. He said he knew who the girl was in life, but he didn't know that they were so connected to their souls. And, the, and when things switched, he was with her and they were like, uh, he had a total awareness of how connected they were. And he said that they weren't really dressed. They had like, not like loincloths on or something, but you know, like just not a lot of clothes. And they were out like on a tropical island thing and he said that when they were walking that the coolest thing was is because nature was interactive with them and uh and they could hear it and it was it was very different how nature was and that they lived in trees like tree houses and that even though him and his girl were out walking that they were kind of like community leaders or something that they had a whole community of people who lived out and just lived like this and so um that one always stood out to me and I thought, oh, there's going to be, I think there's going to be all different kinds of things, like different kinds of ways. It's going to go into all different realities, but it will be uh, more of positive ones. Not all these ones that all these different realities of wars and control and poverty and um, just a lot of uh, horrible stuff that has been going on on this planet. And so it's going to be similar with different realities, but it's going to be um, just more positive, I think. Because I don't think everybody's going to live like, you know, in tree houses and stuff. I think it'll be all different things. You know, there'll be little towns, there'll be little villages, there'll be mountain town. I think there'll be all sorts of things. That's why I think it'll be really interesting to go and see because I think places will become their own um, their own energy, their own kind of reality, their own realm, because that's what we're going to be opening up to so much more with realms and stuff. And, um, so I think it's going to go more like that. That's why it's like, even though people think like, well, you got to, like people get so upset about people not being awake and, um, you know, not everybody is here for the same things. And it is like, there's all different realms and stuff. There's all different possibilities. There's just like, there would be, uh, you know, I mean, it wouldn't make any sense where we're, we were all going to go to the exact same one. It's like, uh, you know, some of us are going to one, some are go to a different one. Like there'll be all different ones and you'll go with, I mean, I think it would still be like groups. Oh, you know what else too? You know, when I had said about, there's going to be whole groups of people that will go together. There's um, something that looks like a giant spaceship that in these pictures over North Korea. And it says something about maybe somebody's coming to pick them up and a bunch of people are leaving together. And that's what I was saying. I think that there will be a lot of people who will leave together and maybe it will be like, maybe it won't be like a spaceship land and all these people will get on, but it will be kind of like they'll leave their um, existence here and just go up into the ship and then go with their, their vibration group or something and go to another reality. Cause even, um, I don't, it's hard. It's, it's hard to explain, but. It's kind of like if you just think of the universe being Tron, 
like we're inside of a body and so uh in you know it's like all the different like red belt red blood cells and white blood cells inside the body that you know can move freely and go to different existence go to different places it's going to be kind of like that and so well on ships and stuff so it's kind of like certain people have more abilities to um because nothing is real you know everything is uh, like an illusion so even when um it's like a ship is really an energy and it's like this energy is sitting there waiting for the other energy to join and then the other energy to join and it can zip off and then they can go and uh, make you know another reality and because it is um I don't know it's weird because it's like on all different kind of levels uh you know how realities are made everything is such a gradation of everything else and uh I don't know that's like one of those things that's like look you can see it but I don't know how to explain it like there's a lot of things that I can see and some people could say, like, the things I see are just made up in my head or something. But then I'll go and I'll hear somebody talking about something that I've seen in my head. And so, it's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, um, okay, let me think. Because there were some more things I want to say. Uh, oh, I'm hoping that she, I think the crisis thing is... They said you get three to five days. I hope she takes the whole five days and really takes advantage of, you know, the uh, counselors and stuff that are there. And um, because you know, getting stuck and I, I don't know how to get, I mean, you can't, you can't heal somebody. You can't get somebody unstuck. It's like all happens inside. And that's why, you know, like I've been able to do this for so long and uh, I don't know like uh how to tell somebody you how to move through themselves how to uh you know like when I, I i've tried to use the thing too about uh fear when i was scared of needles and then i thought i was gonna have to stop them when i was in medical assisting school and then i found out we had to practice on each other with needles and let people try and draw our blood they'd never fucking done it before and give us shots with people who had never done it before. And I had a horrible, horrible fear of needles. I like I was going home crying. I was um I thought I'm gonna have to quit school. There's no way I can't do that. And it was just haunting me. And I had to figure out in my mind how to control my mind. And I did it. I figured out how to control my mind where I could sit there and not let it bother me, where I could minimize what was happening. I could make the, the needle smaller and smaller where I started noticing that fear, you make it bigger, 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 bigger. And when you get control, you make it smaller, 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 smaller. And so I was able to start doing those things, but it was like out of necessity that I would learn how to do it. It wasn't like somebody was showing me or teaching me. I just had to see the problem and come up with like, well, I, I, can't, I can't take all the credit because I've always had strong... Uh, uh, guidance and so I um, you know I've just listened to that guidance and followed those practices and I've learned how to manage myself more and uh, so then but when I'm trying to explain it to somebody it's like look I I don't know because you can like when you're telling somebody to do something like that they don't know how to do it's like you, you can come across as like kind of uh, like uh, heartless or not not having compassion or something. And it's, it isn't that. It's knowing that you have to do it for yourself. It's you who has to do it. And, uh, you know, we, we I, sometimes I think we can't just sit there and pamper each other. And, uh, you know. Uh, and then besides, people will feed off of that. They'll feed off of that energy. And that is only feeds them to stay in that thing. That is um, something I would see as a nurse all the time. 
that you would feed some of these people. Um, a, a health is a thing where people are looking for something. Like they just don't realize, you know, about the health and the sickness and the magic pill and all the stuff that they're looking for something. It's like drug addicts, everybody, you know, and then they go and the doctor will try and make them feel better. And then they go to the hospital and the people try and make them feel better. And so then they get like addicted to this, you know, being sick, being a patient. And, and then I heard this commercial, um, because my phone and my, uh, my phone and my car don't want to connect. And I, so I heard this commercial and it was, oh, just talking about how great nurses are. I mean, they're not taking care of their own families. They're out there taking care of yours, even when they're sick and all this shit. And I was like, look at how they just feed this. And then these nurses, yeah, I'm so good. I'm so much better. And I do this. And it's like, uh, I don't know. It's very toxic. All, there's so many nurses who have that kind of like, uh, I don't know, think they're better or something. Doctors are really bad. Um, but anyways, it's very ego-driven uh, field of employment. It's just, it's very toxic. And especially now, you know, knowing that uh, the doctors are just practicing on you. They have no fucking idea what they're doing. And out of their ego and arrogance, that they just, you know, I'm sure a lot of them think like they're saving people's lives and they're doing everything they can and stuff. But I mean, it's just weird. It's just, it's weird. The whole thing is it's like we're not even real. <laughs> we're holograms. And I don't know. The whole thing is just weird. And so they cut into us but now where they're saying things aren't where we're told that they are and stuff so because none of it is real and then it's kind of trippy is like um how were they cutting into people i don't know the whole thing is weird the whole thing just kind of trips me out how <clears throat> just a lot of the stuff about flesh and blood oh but this is so, oh yeah because this is the thing that was getting me is so in the movie um so i saw these people saying obey saying obey saying and then all of a sudden all these people saw it and it's like everybody's talking about it now and then um but uh the other thing that i see these people saying oh you can't give energy to predictive programming this is predictive programming it's like dude this is already happening what are you talking about predictive programming it's already happening this is this like old news and uh and then and then they make the main characters so oblivious to stand out to be like you know are you oblivious are you dependent are you angry are you vindictive like all these things to get people to notice in themselves i don't know what they notice in themselves but i think that was a part of the movie moving so slow is to be more insightful and think more slow, slow down. It wasn't all action, jump, 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 you know? And even when the plane was crashing, uh, I mean, all the things, it just wasn't real action, action kind of, you know, it was way more slow and thoughtful, which, you know, that's not, that's not old Barack. And I guess he was executive producer. I don't know how much of it he had influence over, but I don't even think it was really him. I think it was, they're using his name. But um, anyways, the the people with this predictive programming. So when I'm sitting here listening to them, and so I think this is in the spiritual community thing where they're always like, uh, you know, you're going to, manifest it we're all manifesting this stuff together it's like okay then what is destiny what is destiny how is there a soul contract if we're just doing this just right now we're just all just doing this right now it's just a free-for-all every day when we get up it's just like well better thing we'll be careful what i think about it's gonna affect the whole like is it uh, like that doesn't make any sense to me it, this is uh, uh we don't have control like that it isn't like that it is destiny. 
It is like it's a thought that's already happened. It's like you're looking at a thought that has already occurred. And it's already a thought form. It's already a plan. It's already done. And you, you don't have a say or control over it. You can't change all what you are there focused on it is to learn from it. It's a thought form that happened and goes, it's just a thought form. It's just like you have thoughts going off in your head. You have dreams that you can get more focused on. You have thoughts that are going, this is a thought form. So a thought happens, it's already set. So, uh, you know, and that's what, you know, where the soul contract is already set and the uh, destiny is already set. And so, you know, I don't know, you know, that we go and we sit down and say, okay, let's design a life together and let's all, uh, you know, sign contracts that this is, this is how it's going. I don't think it's like that. It is, um. But it is set. It's like the contract's written. What your experience is with this person is there. But it's like these thoughts are also um, their creation. Because the things that happen in one life affect another life. And so they affect, they, they, it's not just this life is affected by itself. No, this life will affect another life, affect another life, affect another life on all levels. Because it will affect all lives in the present moment. But it will also affect all your other lives that you go outside of this life and live. It has to do with your soul. And it has to do with and where you come up with the karmic balance and stuff. Because you have all of these going and they have to always set each other back into balance. And so it's like they have to put themselves into balance. And the the whole thing of being here now in this is we're moving slowly through that thought form. We're moving through it and giving it focus so that we can learn from it. So we are focused. We've slowed this thought form. This thought form occurred. Now we've slowed it down so we can look at it more through a microscope so we can see our side, see our part, so we can understand ourselves, so we can go through the experience. It's just, it's wild because in this experience is, um, I, you know, I don't think it's that wild that we can feel because you can be in a dream and feel like somebody hit you. You can feel it. So I don't, uh, you know, like you can fall. You can feel it like you can feel things in dreams too. And so I don't think it's that crazy that we can feel things. I think it is, um, it is, uh, the way that the people can start getting so focused of thinking that this is real. Like that is the part that is, you know, that they can get confused in the slowing down that all of a sudden that they think this is what is real. And it's like, no, this is, it's like an, an instant. And that's why when we are out of the slow down thought form and you're out of it, it you see like, oh, it was like one second. It felt like it was, you know, 85 years, but it's really like one second you're just getting to slow down and experience and see it. It's like, go on that ride and see where, you know, how you become you, where are you, what parts you play, who are you and what are you and what are you doing? And so it's, um, but I don't know, it's weird how these people start being like, um, and they just, oh my gosh, some of these people with their manifesting, manifesting, and they're just, it's like getting so much more off the chain or off the hook or whatever, where it's like, yeah, you want to manifest a million dollars? This is how you get to manifest a million dollars. Get a million dollars. Like, money, 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 money. This is how you get happy. You want to be happy? You want to have money? You want to be happy and have money? It's like, oh my God, damn. Uh, it's just like, this is not spiritual. <laughs> like, There's so many things that I see out there and here. It's like, that's not spiritual. That's not spiritual. I was like, what do you think spiritual is to control the, uh, it's to control the experience when the spiritual is to be at peace with the experience, not to control it. The, trying to control it, 
shows that you don't trust, you have fear. When you can relax, that shows that you you have trust, that you can just go, you're along for the ride. You're not in, in, in then plus it's on all different levels, you know, because there's part of it is like, well, you can't take it too serious because it's just a quick thought. It's just over in a minute. And so you can't be all caught up in the illusion. And so there's just so many people who think that they're so, you know, spiritually enlightened. And it's like, I, I just find it so strange. And, and, and then plus on this whole concept of the, um, you know, creating your reality. So like, uh, the, the collective is the movement is already, it, it's already going like that. That movement is already in going. It's like the, we're the thoughts that get it there. And people just keep trying to look at things from over here and it's it's different it's like it's like you're looking from up here but looking backwards it's like all these things have to occur to get you here you can't stop these things from occurring because you're here how'd you get here you got here because all these things happened but everybody keeps looking at it from back here and so there is no none of this like uh the because the like the predictive programming thing and stuff i think that they are i think they just are kind of like doing that or something to fuck with people's heads because um i think that there's something about revelations that they are doing some of this stuff to try and get control of the story so I think that, you know, for the Simpsons to say this is going to happen and then for it to happen, like, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't watch the Simpsons. So, uh, you know, all the people who watched it and saw it to me it is like the predictive programming is them telling us ahead of time what they're going to do. Not that we're making it happen because they told us 20 years ago uh, that this could happen and then we made it happen. I think that they are preparing us for something that is going to happen. It's like, hey, going to let you know up here in a few years, we're going to, you know, blow up some building and we're going to do this or that. And that, that it's kind of like we see it on TV and we think it's entertainment when really it's like a, a signed contract or something like, hey, this, this is going down. And we're like, okay, okay, that's okay. Yeah, that's cool. You know, and we don't. Uh, but that is a part of the lesson. That's a part of, you know, you know, the things that happen to get us to where we're going. So all, all those things are supposed to happen. Everything that is happening is supposed to happen. It's not, we're not getting up every day and making this stuff happen. It, this stuff is happening because this is the way it happened. This is how it happens. This is the, this is the happening. And, uh, so anyways, I was just like, I was, was like, that was so weird how people don't understand it is destiny. Everyone who crosses your path is destined to be there. There's no accidents. There's nothing happens accidentally. Everyone that is, crosses your path is meant to cross your path. Everything that happens every day is meant to happen. It is nothing is by accident. It is a, it's a predestined, and um, like I said, your experience is you slowing down and looking, and you could look at it from different points of view. You could look at it from different angles, and you know that would be what you were looking at. That would be what you were seeing, and um. So anyways, that is like the creation of realities it is the way you look at something and it's all in how you carry yourself and how you react to life and to the thing that happens to you. And, you know, do you get mad and vindictive and uh, angry, bitter, uh, sad? Because a lot of people are just too sad. They can't pull themselves out of their sadness. They can't pull themselves out of feeling bad about themselves 
And to me, an important thing is when you notice yourself getting so down, you got to pull yourself out. You got to put on some happy music, dance around, you know, to spend a day doing something nice for yourself. You know, try and you, you can't just drain yourself of all your energy. You got to put some back in and, um, but you got to stay in the process of releasing you can't get stuck in a part where, you know, you're just, uh, because it's, it's just as more of the victim, more of the, you know, oh, well, I'm just the worst person in the whole world. No one's worse than me. It's like, there's a lot of people worse than you. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people worse than you. And, um, so you can't get just caught if you're holding yourself there. You just sit there so you can have your daily, those punch yourself out every day. And tell yourself that you're just a worthless, rotten person. How long do you think that can carry on? I just saw this woman doing a video and she said, you know, sorry people, but if you're going to keep eating fast food and not eating healthy foods, you're going to just get sick and die. That's just how you leave. You'll just won't be able to keep going. The vibration is going to be way too much. And if you keep being in low vibration and how you're eating and how you're taking care of yourself, you're just going to get sicker and sicker. And see, I see that on an emotional scale so much. Uh, is um, I, I just see it so clear. If you can't keep up in the game, it, you will fall off. Just like in a video game. Just like when you're leveling up, you have to keep up with the game. The game is going. You can't just, you know, you got to see what's happening and keep up with the game. And, um, and then I know when people are overwhelmed that they, um, <clears throat> you know, they can't see past how they feel. And, um, you know, and another thing too, is it's not for me to change somebody or to, because I know it's not the end game. It's not like everybody has to win and go to the age of Aquarius. No, the age of Aquarius is going to happen. That's, that's what we're in the process of, you know, the road to the age of Aquarius is what leads to the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius is always going to happen. And, but it doesn't mean it's for everybody. Everybody, there's millions of different realities. There's millions of different things to do. Not just one thing to do. Or just some of us who are here to, you know, remind people this isn't the end. This is something else. This is something else happening. This is a, this place isn't what you think it is. And the, I don't know. I just feel like I'm trying to get people to realize something that they've forgotten or uh, they don't understand yet or something. I'm not even sure. I swear to God, all I can do is just keep saying what I see and um, hoping, you know, to reach people and get them to see it's hard to watch so many people struggle. It's it's kind of frustrating to watch so many people just just out of sheer ignorance how they look at life. And especially if you're marketing yourself as being spiritual and then you um, don't, I mean, you're not talking about life in a spiritual way. It's like... My stomach is growling and growling. Um, oh, made such good chili relleno yesterday. I have some of the leftover. Um, but anyways, um, hopefully for the next couple of days, I'll be able to talk. It feels so much better. I don't know why. I feel like I'm going to talk so quiet. But I know, um, you know, I, I, just, I mean, uh, she's struggling with a lot of stuff. Like uh, there's uh, paranoia is a big one. I think when people are raised in trauma and they have been indoctrinated or programmed to not trust anybody, everybody's out to get them. And so many of these kids, they've come through a system that has just <clears throat> traumatized them after traumatized them. They're all on high cortisol. They're taken out of homes that shifts their development. Uh, there's just a lot of things, a lot of obstacles for them to overcome. And, uh, you know, in our society is full. We've got you know, a huge wave of all these kids who, you know, uh, are emotionally stunted because they were just distracted on these uh, devices 
that they weren't going out and actually living and growing. They are just um, stunted. Like we've got so much uh, developmental stagnation through so many different generations. What was this one too? I just saw somebody saying something about um, a certain attack on, because each one has, you know, each category has different attacks. I think one of the big things I think on the millennials is on uh, what, what I see is um, reproduction and uh, uh, there's a huge thing of, you know, the, the family doesn't need to be a male and a female and you sure don't need kids. It's like a, a breakdown or something of that certain structure. Um, the other, you know, the generation before them, there's so much with drugs and alcohol. Uh, so cocaine was so prevalent and uh, a lot of parents, you know, were, it got selfish in those times. So there's just all, there's all different things, all different stages, but it's all different stages of the things that we're here to learn and stuff. But there's, um, you know, the, the problems in the schools and stuff, there's just certain generations that are having big problems and it's, you know, it's not them, it's not their fault. It's the ignorance of society but that's why society has to learn from its own ignorance. It has to be willing to look at that mirror when the mirror is standing right in front of them and see the, the problems. And then we're not going to be able to get away from them because there's going to be so much where people are going to go down. There's going to be people, uh, right? They just put out a thing and said that the uh, Gitmo, they decided that they're going to televise this stuff. So, this, uh, you know, it's going to be big. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cases, a lot of things. And it's going to also be regular people like Nuremberg thing, you know, where it was regular people. And uh, what was the other one too, when they did that uh, communist thing in Hollywood <clears throat> and uh, they were trying to take down all these people uh, and saying that they were communists and stuff like that. This is going to be in intense because it's going to be regular, a lot of regular people. Um, I mean, there'll be politicians and judges and sheriffs and CPS workers, doctors, lawyers, realtors, developers, contractors, police, uh, I mean, yeah, like all different people are going to be going. Um, and uh, also uh, there was video of um, Chicago. There was some kind of explosions. So who knows, but that stuff is going to keep going in these cities and stuff. It's going to get more and more dangerous. And even in New York yesterday, there was a building collapse uh, in the Bronx of a, like a place where people lived. And all of a sudden, just the side of it just falls down. And there's going to be more and more of this stuff because it's our whole world is collapsing. And it's going to be collapsing in all different ways. The things ahead, though that, you know, we need to be aware of, I still say, is, um, you know, the weather and the reset, the the cataclysm part of the thing. You know, the rest of the stuff is going to work its way out. The people waking up and stuff, because a, a, a big part of the awakening is going to be when the light flips on. All these people are just feeling so down because their families don't see and stuff. It's like, yeah, but they're here for this other impact. They're here to see, like, is, is going to be impactful to see it from that perspective. We got to have people see it from that perspective. Why would it be going on? We have to have the, the, the universe needs that perspective. And there's tons of people that that works really well into their, you know, their karmic balance and stuff is playing these different parts. And so the, you know, these people who are going to wake up when the light comes on and then they're all of a sudden like, oh my God, they get a completely new perspective of life, completely new view of everything that they thought. And that is going to be like a, a punch to the gut. It's going to be difficult on many levels. And so that has to occur. It's going to occur. And it's right around the corner. And so, um, 
all this stuff has to continue to collapse. And the, uh, I, I just thought that was so wild to arrive to do that movie. Then they've got those deers in Westminster and deers over by uh, the Statue of Liberty. I, almost like they went and delivered them there. Like they went and drove them up and put them there just to make a point, just to drive it home, just to get people to be like, whoa, that was in that movie. Oh, whoa, that was, you know, to see like this stuff is already happening, you guys. And, and the whole thing in that was just to try and get people to just get into awareness to see like you're going to need to uh, be, take, be able to take care of yourself and stuff. And it's going to be temporary. It doesn't have to do with that. It has to do with getting people to wake up. This is all to push people to pull into themselves and wake up. And so the, um, you know, that, that all, we're, we're in the process of that happening. And then there'll be some, you know, events, scary thing that will just flip everything to go the other direction. The money thing is so like teetering on the edge. Like it can go at any second. I, I, you know, I would really think like it would be shocking if it gets through this week, but you know, they've shocked me many a week. So, <laughs> but, um, I, I just, it's hard to believe that it wouldn't, um, be this won't be the crash and so that could be the thing that's going to set everything in motion and then you know there's going to be trials like it's all going to go fast though it's all going to be so linked in the the, the government the medical the uh, the controlling mechanism is just going to collapse all it's just going to go boom 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 and media, it'll all go, it'll all go together. And so it'll all go uh, quick once something goes and it's going to be really overwhelming to the people who haven't been paying attention. It's going to be like their whole world is collapsing and it's going to seem scary to a lot of people. And, but that is, you know, it's part of it. It's what has to happen. And so it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen really soon. But the thing that they didn't talk about, though, was all of the weather things and the reset because they just left out that whole cataclysm thing. And um, but that's that's the that's the part that I think is going to be the shift. Once the shift happens, that's what there will be a lot of talk of that. A lot of talk about starting communities in safe places, how to get communities like there's going to be a big shift, I think. So we'll see. It's going to be a, a shift in directions, but it's also going to be in all different levels because not everybody's going to be at that level. Some people will be so in their pain and so in their confusion that they're not going to be like thinking about, well, now there's a cataclysm coming now. <laughs> and they're trying to change. We're trying to move to safer ground. That's going to be just like, oh my gosh. Uh, so, but it'll be all on all different levels. But they're definitely the people at the front of the line they're here to start that movement towards, you know, and it will be like pulling the rest of the energy along because there's always got to be people on the front line. There's always got to be people who are moving into discomfort first. And while everybody else is standing back going, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know, there has to be those of us who will be like, come on, guys, we can do this. So anyways. I just, I know that that is a big part of the energy, a big part of the movement. And I know that it's very uncomfortable and discomfort to be at the front of the line when everybody else is pointing at you, laughing at you and thinks you're stupid and ridiculous and stuff. It's just, you know, and I always feel bad because it's like, man, you guys don't see what's coming. You don't see, like, you just don't see what's coming. And, uh, you know, uh, that's a hard it's hard, like the whole thing is hard on so many levels. But anyways, let me think if there was something else I wanted to say about that healing. Because the big thing that stands out to me, you know, is when you've had a lot of pain and you don't feel like you can trust, that is a big one that you have to learn to be vulnerable, learn to take chances, learn you can protect yourself. It all is linked together with boundaries and uh, getting to know yourself is a big one too, to learn to use your voice and speak your truth. And it doesn't have to be like public like this. It can be to just say to another person, that bothers me. That hurts me. And it's, uh, you know, that's speaking your truth, not hiding and just putting more pain down inside of you and closing your throat off more. 
um, you know, it's important to be able to say and trust and be vulnerable sometimes. So and it is hard when you've been hurt over and over and over and people have screwed you over, over and over and over. So just, um, you know, is a part of, it's all part in the process with the forgiveness, taking each day as the next day. You don't, you know, you just have to get through today. You don't have to, you know, think way ahead of what if this happens? What if that happens? What will I do then? What will I do that? No, just go by a day and everybody who comes into your path is there, is meant to be there so that you have an opportunity. If they push your boundaries, it's so you have an opportunity to define your boundaries, to understand yourself. And so, and that's an important thing. That's what you're doing here is learning about yourself, learning how to define yourself. You're not here to save other people. You're not here to rescue other people. And, uh, and not to mean it in a harsh way. It's just an impossible thing. You just can't do it. And the only person who can do it is a self. And, you know, and even when you're trying to explain to people how to do it, it's on, everybody's on different levels of understanding. And so, and everybody's at different places emotionally. And emotionally, you can be overwhelmed. You can be drowning in your own emotions. And it's important to get a handle on your emotions, to just slow down. Because remember, this is a mastery. That's what you're working on when you're working on this, uh, trying to transition and trying to heal and let go of things and raise your vibration. It is, um, you know, it's the path to enlightenment. It's the path to letting go of things, to seeing things on the higher ground, to not be so uh, dense and so uh, triggered and so overwhelmed by things. It's moving out of that energy and it's hard to explain how to get out of that energy, um, you know, unless you're talking to somebody who talks like on your same language and totally understands what you're saying. And so it's important to just keep trying things, trying different things. Uh, you know, it may not be that easy to talk to a bunch of people. There's going to be a lot more conversations about this stuff soon, though. Um, but uh, there's always self-help books. There's ways to just keep yourself processing through. It just is really important to not get stuck in any of the things that you're processing through. Because that just holds you back. And and then it becomes egotistical. And so you got to see that's what you're working on is your ego. So when your ego keeps holding you back, that's that dark energy that just has a hold of you. And so that dark energy doesn't want to let go. You got to keep pushing it and pushing it back way back, <laughs> push them back, push them back way back. You got to, you know, work on being aware of the, the hold that this dark energy has on you and keep pushing it back. And it does, you know, use your ego uh, it uses these voices inside of your head. And so that's another thing why well, you got to slow down and pay attention. Pay attention to the voices in your head. Pay attention to the messages, the messaging that's going on, uh, the repeated messaging, how you just keep saying the same things to yourself and start breaking those patterns. Start going in and disconnecting from that energy of, um, uh, I don't know, it's just a beat down uh, it, 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 the, the point of why it does it is to keep you connected to it so you don't feel better and do better. So you just stay dependent. Like it, you, uh, it isn't like you are just feeding off of them. They're feeding off of you because they will drain you. It's very vampiric kind of parasitic energy. So that's why, you know, it's micro macro, why there's so much disease and sickness on the planet right now. It is it goes back to this emotional um uh emotional sickness and it goes back to the light and dark, the energy, the out of balance, the two sides of you and it not being in balance and needing to let go of all the darkness so that you can bring in more light and get more balance. Because the darkness will hold you back. In this place, in this game, there's a lot of darkness that gets a hold of you. And so you've got to have awareness. That's why this mirror will be held up in front of you. So you can see the darkness inside of you. So that you can 
you know, pick and choose your battles, pick and choose who you are and what you represent. And, um, oh, I, I'll say this and then I'll head out. The, um, cause the one girl, like the, the people are still going so deep into their stuff. The one girl who is just worshiping Lucifer now, she just, I, I don't know. I, it seems like she just is mentally losing it or something. And, um, I don't know when you are going through this awakening, I don't know, you uh, these connecting to all of these entities and uh, giving it energy and, um, and, and, and I don't even know, you know, if she's, uh, who she's messing with and they are doing things and knocking things and, I, you know, just, I don't know. It's, it's strange. It's like watching somebody unravel and, um, and then there's a hateful side too that starts coming out and wishing, uh, bad things on people and stuff. It's like, man, people are just, it's when that, when that, when the light comes on, when, that when everybody is just held with something right in front of them, that all they're be able to see is their own ignorance, their own meanness, their own hatefulness. <clears throat> but it's all so you can go deeper into yourself to see where does it come from? Why why is this here? And in you know what I'm telling you one way to is just start slowing down the conversations in your head and start picking up on the energy and where it's coming from and noticing the dark energy and how much it influences you and uh, to keep you trapped in pain and resentment and anger and bitterness and fear. All those things are traps of the dark energy. So you got to just keep working through them. And when you find that energy in you, when you find those, uh, that, that, I don't know, being, uh, that that energetic sense inside of you, you got to process through it. You can't shame yourself and be mad at yourself. There's a reason why it's there. And so you got to learn how to process through it and let it go and just move towards the light. So anyways, I don't know if I'm making any sense. It's, it's so confusing too, especially when you're talking to people and, you know, and nobody understands you. And, um... It's like, oh my God, maybe I just sound totally wacky all the time or something. But I know this stuff works. And then I'll hear other people saying things. And it's like, no, as a confirmation. When I hear that stuff, it's a confirmation. No, you're saying exactly what I'm supposed to be saying. And, uh, you know, who's supposed to understand will understand. And I think that a lot of people's understandings are going to be shifting. And then they're going to, there's going to be a lot of seekers all of a sudden trying to seek and find out like what's happening. And so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. But you know, we were in these shifts. This is all happening. This is the ending of something and the beginning of something else. And so more and more that ends and falls apart around you, that's just opportunities to let go, let go, let go. Just everything that falls apart, don't try and hurry and put it back together. As all these people who are doing that are going to end up being angry and frustrated at themselves that they were, you know, why were they doing that? And so anyways, now it's, it's only 3 30. <laughs> I probably go back to sleep or something, but it was like, Oh my gosh, I had to go and I had that stuff on my mind all since yesterday, since, you know, since the whole, I mean, it's been a few days where she's just been kind of unraveling and not being able to pick herself back up. And, but then she would get real paranoid about going to a place. I guess she's had a lot of traumatic things happen. And so, you know, she's had to overcome a lot of things and she's doing this all sober, man. I mean, I just, I'm constantly trying to tell her, you got to build yourself up. Like you are doing so good, but pain and your own pain, your own shame, your own guilt, your own feeling bad about yourself. And that is, uh, you know, when, when you are, uh, have trauma 
it's a natural reaction for some people to lash out. And then the, you know, the lashing out, the things that you do are the things you feel the worst about. They're the hardest things to get over. And it can be just, you know, you knowing you said something mean on purpose that hurt somebody's feelings will eat you up inside. And so those are the things you got to just keep letting go of. And, uh, but anyways, I could see, you know, that she was really struggling and, but she kept putting up a wall. Like she'll come out and she wants to go to a place, but then she just, you know, starts spinning out about it. And so, and then there's so many times where it just pushes me to have to be so firm and so strong in this one way that's very uncomfortable to me. Uh, but it makes me stronger. It makes me more defined. It makes me more firm and more sure of myself. It's strange how it works like that. When you do something that makes you really uncomfortable, it makes you more strong and more firm in who you are. And and it's not like being mean or something because it it is very much like a there's a tough love. There's a, you know, pushing the bird out of the nest. And, you know, some of the birds just want to keep going back in and going back in. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. It's like, you got to learn that you are good enough. You know, and that all that messaging is coming in from an inside and all that dark energy is holding on to you and you got to process through it. So anyways, I just hope that she goes there and she gets some, um, some of whatever it is she needs to get her over this hump. So that she can start, you know, getting back into just processes. It's just a process of, you know, facing things and letting go. Facing things and letting go. And it can take all different times. Some, day, some days it can be like you process several things through one day. And another day it can be you cry for three days over something that happened. So it's, you know, it's just um, don't go and do drugs and drink and even tv can be a huge distraction but sometimes you need those distractions you got to recognize what it is you need but then don't don't let yourself get back out of balance and stay in something that you know distracts you and you gotta be and, and plus the universe won't really allow it at this point like anything that would come on all you're going to be able to do is see it's going to things that will stand out and I'm probably even going and watching something you've watched a million times. All of a sudden, you're going to notice things that you never noticed before. It's like the universe is going to... Well, anybody who's here to grow, the people who aren't here to grow, they'll just keep staying uh, lost. So, or, you know, I mean, they still have the whole thing about the lights turning on. But I just think, you know, we got to get out of this idea that everybody's here for the same thing. And if they're not doing what we're doing, that they're not doing it right. They're broken. They're stupid. They're ignorant. All the stuff that people do. So anyways, um, I will, we'll see how this day goes. Uh, it's Tuesday. Uh, to me, uh, it's like uh, just having one energy less out of the house. It just feels like, oh. And then plus she does have a lot of dark attachments that follow her around. And it is very intense. I mean, the dogs are so reactive. Oh my gosh. She even walks in the room, still gets so nervous. And the other dog, Jack, goes over and starts licking her, licking her. Stella goes over. She just starts looking at me crying. She starts getting closer. Like, I, I, I think she can, dogs can sense. And, and like I said, that one day, this big dark energy went through the room and changed the lighting in the room where I jumped, I looked, I was like, what in the hell just happened? And Stella's looking at me and I was looking at her because we both saw this big dark energy go through. It's like, oh, and that's another thing too, is when somebody is struggling so much with their dark energy, you don't want to be feeding into, because there's so much. And that's why I worry, you know, because I know it's affecting I know it's affecting the dogs, but I'm sure it affects my mood too. And so you got to keep, um, you know, you don't want to be feeding that energy. So you want to be, you know, uh, causing a conflict with that energy, you know, doing stuff that is more positive. And um, anyways, hopefully you get what I'm talking about. So we'll see how the week goes. I'm hoping for a few days of just this peace and lighter energy and just being able to you know I don't know I like to I like to be alone 
like I like it. I don't it's so weird is um I think so many people think it's lonely or something, but it's like it's like less interference. It's like less of somebody um wanting something from you. <laughs> so it's uh, it's I don't know. I I like it. It's not like I want to spend every moment of my life alone, but I still have, but I definitely have an appreciation for alone time. And I grew that appreciation through being isolated through quarantine and um, having so much of that time to myself and so much of what I did with the time and seeing how productive it is and how much it helped me, <clears throat> especially noticing like how much... Uh, other people's energy can interfere with your own growth and your own process. And one person in the house going through something can take down a whole house. And But each house that has that stuff going on it is for that house to learn boundaries and rules and stuff. And sometimes people need to take their pain and keep it, you know, to themselves. You can't take your pain around and, you know, just lash out and wave it in everybody's face and try and get everybody to be mad or be sad or feel sorry for you and stuff. You know, it's, um, it's a, it's something that you got to hold to you. And then if you don't like how it feels, you got to process through it. <laughs> you got to heal it. It can all be healed. Everything can be healed. I don't think there's anything that can't be healed. So anyways, I will, um, talk to you tomorrow. And we'll see what goes down. <laughs> there's no telling. It's like every day. There's cyber attacks. There's hacking. There's this. The water's infiltrated. The power's infiltrated. It's like all this shit. Just nonstop. So anyways, we'll see how this day goes. I'm going to go ahead and get this downloading. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.